If you're a Giratina fan and love this special art by Shinji Kanda, you're in for a treat. Pokemon China have finally released this card in its own set called Dark Shadow Over the Blue Sea, or Bihai Anying. This simplified Chinese release is split into two sets, with Lugia as the mascot of set A and Giratina as the mascot of set B. In this video, I'll be focusing on set B this time, highlighting Giratina and lots of cards mainly from Lost Origin and some from Silver Tempest. If you want to learn more about set A, please be sure to watch my opening video of that set on my YouTube channel. Also, if you're wondering why Giratina has two different looks, it has two different forms. This is Giratina's origin form, basically how it appeared in its home dimension, the distortion world. Unless it's holding this thing. And if you ever see Giratina with legs, this is its altered form while it's away from its home. Probably chilling in the Pokemon world. Again, unless it's holding this hideous thing called a Grisius Orb. Now if you're chasing after the Giratina because you like the artwork, which is by Shinji Kanda, you're in luck because this set contains two other cards illustrated by the same artist, Hypno and Behem. The artist's incredibly detailed work, in my opinion, pops on any card, and you may have seen their work previously on the Magikarp illustration rare from Paldea Evolved and the Galarian Moltres promo from the Crown Zenith tin. But anyways, back onto the set. Just like many other simplified Chinese Pokemon releases, there are two types of booster packs in the set of Dark Shadow over the Blue Sea. Slim and Jumbo. Now, let's hopefully pull something good. Alright, so just like with set A, I'm gonna start with my favorite. The Jumbo Pack Booster Box. Yes, the box itself isn't Jumbo, but the packs are. Why? Because they have 25 cards. Very different from the Slim Packs, which have only 5 cards. So 5 times more in these. You're definitely gonna get at least some sort of Hollows, V, V Stars, etc. Um, these have different Pokemon types from the other set with the Lugia on it, set A. Um, that's another indication of how you know which one is set A and B. All right, let's, get, let's get our six jumbo packs. I'll show you guys the thickness too. And one thing I always like to point out as well, when it comes to the jumbo packs, you always have the black tips. And also here you can see how thick they are. I love the colors of these, by the way. We still have the Lost Zone background with the Giratina. Super nice. Even the color types match the Lost Zone colorway, so that's pretty cool. I think for this set in particular, the black tips look really cool. It'll match more than the rainbow white tips. And also no card trick with the 25 card packs, just so you guys know. Lots of cards from Lost Origin mainly. Set A had more so Silver Tempest cards, and you'll still still get some cards from Silver Tempest in this. Um, like these Gun Tank um, special art is in this set, as well as uh, Amistar and also Hisuian Arcanine. So random assortment, you have Candice too. I'm um, even seen from my thumbnail already um, and other trainers. But in terms of Lost Origin, you'll definitely get the Giratina special art. As you can see with the pack art, Giratina is the mascot. Aerodactyl's in this one too. That was another very popular Pokemon from Lost Origin. Um, PokeRev definitely hyped up that card since he couldn't pull it <laughs> after how many packs. And you have a lovely Absol art rare. So yes, Crown Zenith cards are also going to be here or V-Star Universe for the Japanese equivalent. And here are guaranteed holographics. Very nice. And there you go. Speak of the devil. Aerodactyl made an appearance, not the special art. And we have our reverse hollows too. I love this evil. Um, very nice on the, what's it called, pattern. Whenever the dark type comes up though, it is a little bit hard to see in my opinion. But let's go ahead and sleeve up the Aerodactyl. Also too, I know that people have asked this question in the previous video. If you haven't caught it in uh, set A, the SR or secret rare and higher rarities are not guaranteed anymore with the even the jumbo booster pack boxes and the slim booster pack boxes. Why is that? I don't know. Pokemon China just have decided to change things up. But on the flip side, to kind of make up for that, you do have a chance of pulling more than one secret rare. I have heard from other people and also seen openings where people have pulled more than one, two, three, four even. It can get really crazy. Um, but yes, it can happen with this. Um, it started with Brave and Charming Stars, the previous main release with the Lucario and Hisuian Typhlosion. And there we go, a Shinji Kanda Behiem. So every time I see a Shinji Kanda art, I'll definitely bring it up. Again, because it's the same artist as the Giratina special art. So very happy to see that. Oh my gosh, and Hypno! Look at that, guys! In the same pack, you better hit the like button, guys. We got super lucky. Can we pull the third one? I'm just gonna keep the Shinji Kanda arts here on the side for possible good luck. And we have some cards too with the Lost Zone um, accent there. And even on this one, Lost Zone City, that's really cool. So yes, if you've played the Lost Box deck, this is your set if you're playing in simplified Chinese in mainland China. We have enough Coal Rest too. And we have here Articuno. If only we got uh, exclusive 
for simplified Chinese like we did with the Zapdos. Unfortunately, no language exclusive in this set. Wow, that's really funny. We got Giratina, V-Star, not the special art. That would have been hilarious. All the Shinji Kanda artworks in one pack, right? If that happened. We have Sandy Gas. Oh, and Lady. Very nice. So let's go ahead and sleep up our lovely V-Star. Very happy to see that. We have cool dresses in this as well. We also saw him from Lost Origin. Even the uh, special art rare from Crown Zenith or um, uh, and also V Star Universe is also pullable from set B, Dark Shadow over the Blue Sea. Very nice pack though, very happy with that. Mainly because of all the Shinji Kanda art and then, you know, ironically there was a Giratina in there, not the special art, but it's kind of a creepy little, you know, occurrence there. All right, Palo San, Cincino, lots of cards, guys, lots of Sword and Shield. We're not caught up yet. That's one big difference between the simplified and traditional Chinese releases. Waylord, ooh, very scary. But this is why I like opening the jumbo packs more than the slim packs. Of course, I do prefer the slim card quality because it is unique and different. Very nice Mewtwo, holographic. Chao Meng is the Mandarin Chinese name, meaning ultimate dream. I like to bring that up. And we have Pidgeot. Yes, the full art is also in the set. And we have Reverse Hollow, Crocodile, and another Pokemon, but it's okay. Let's keep going, guys. If we can get an SR, I'll be very happy at least one. If I don't, it's okay. All right, let's keep going here. Horsey, very nice. Whalmer, oh, that's really cute. By Kodama. And we have Swirlix, we have Meditite there. Very nice Komiya artwork of Dreepy. It looks really sad though, but it's, I like the color scheme of this. Very, very nice touch on the palette there. Sandy Gas, but if we do pull it, I'll be very happy. That'll be my first time. And there's another Komiya R2. A lot of your, a lot of you Komiya fans will love this set too. And Candice is there in the background, cameo cameoing. Another Lost Zone theme card, Comfy. Comfy Art Rare is also pullable from this set too, Bennett. So yeah, you'll have a lot of your Lost Zone um, cards in this particular set. There's Candice, yes, this, the full art is also pullable, if I didn't mention it earlier. Go Lurk. More Lost Zone cards. Ooh, yes, guys, Radiant cards are still here. We have Eternatus. Very happy to pull this in Simplified Chinese. I am an Eternatus fan and collector, and I love the dragon typing accent there in the middle. All right, we have here Hisuian, Arcanine. I did mention that. Quite a shame it didn't get a special art, but it's all right. And if you guys want to see, too, the lovely logo there on the bottom left corner. Oh, wow, we did not expect that. I always see this, guys. We've been getting Radiance and the Super Rare, or sorry, Secret Rare in the same pack. So there we go. Aerodactyl, if that's the only secret rare, oh well. I wish I definitely got the special art. That would have been so cool. I love that very much because it literally is like the prehistoric times. It's funny because it makes you think about the ancient paradox Pokemon. How does that go into play with the fossil Pokemon like Aerodactyl? But the, hit the like button, guys. We've got a shiny Eternatus, really cool Radiant Eternatus, and Aerodactyl, secret rare. Did not expect that because they're not guaranteed anymore. Doesn't mean the chance of pulling a secret rare is low. You know, obviously you've seen my other videos. I've had pretty decent luck. I have not hit a no SR box for jumbo booster packs, but I definitely have hit one for the slim pack booster boxes. Those tend to be the more unforgiving boxes, especially with how much effort you have to put in with opening the packs. It's like you have to go through all the blisters just to find out your packs don't have anything special. <laughs> maybe some art rares, maybe some, you know, radiant cards, which kind of can make up for it, but you want to get that textured card, you know what I mean? Especially the ones that you really want. It doesn't help too that these sets are really big. It has Bufalant, another Lost Zone card, you can tell by the little swirls there. Fantina, also full art is pullable from this set too. Uh, we saw previously, oh look at that, Barbarical. A lot of them just keep popping up. They're all concentrated mm. in this. Oh, at least we got another Giratina V. Very nice, not the alt art, but I do like it. Again, the different colors from the Lost Zone. Basically, um, worse than a discard pile because you can't recover those cards. Once it's gone, it's gone in terms of the TCG. All right, guys. I also like this Executor, too, because we just got a little bit of Executor from Par uh, Paradise Dragona. Um, so regular Cantonian Executor is right there. All right, guys. Last Jumbo Pack. Uh, again, six Jumbo Packs per booster box nowadays. This did not be... This was not the case back in Sun and Moon era. They definitely changed this kind of like early on in the Sword and Shield era. Not in the beginning. I'd say starting around Primordial Martial Arts is when that happened. Very interesting. So Vivid Portrayals and um, Giant Max Battle or Gig Gigantamax Battle early in the Sword and Shield era still had those other types of boxes. I think there was 24 Jumbo Packs per booster box 
And then the slim pack booster boxes look like a typical Japanese booster box with 30 packs, five cards per pack. So very different orientation. Uh, look at that. We have last year. So this is the horse of Ice Rider Calyrex, but it's without Calyrex. So very interesting there. That would have been cool if that was Spectre, but I think it's in the other set. And we have Aerodactyl V-Star. Okay, so no secret rare pull, but it's okay. Got the Lost Zone cards, guys. Look at all those colors, the little swirls. And we have Horsey as well. All right, so box one is done. Let's see if the slim packs will treat me nicely, but it's okay because if I do pull that Giratina special art, I would definitely love to pull it in the slim pack form. So here is the lovely slim pack booster box. It's definitely a lot taller and chunkier than the jumbo pack booster box, ironically enough. You'd think it'd be the other way around. If you haven't seen set A, you're about to see why it's much chunkier mainly because of the packaging. I call these the environmentally unfriendly packs, if you haven't heard me say this a bunch of times already. So there you go. Ooh, they're much darker than the um, set A versions. Okay, yeah, they definitely made these more theme, which is nice. So as you can see here, the packaging is gray. A stark contrast from the light blue of the Lugia pack. So I kind of like that. Let's put that there. So there's 24 packs, slim packs, they're all packaged. So if you want, if you're a sealed collector, this is a great way to store your packs. At least it's better protected. And again, five cards per pack, slim packs. So here we go, guys. The arduous task of getting every pack out of these blisters. So here you go. So you have the kind of iridescent or rainbowy white tips. And as you can see too, slim, only five cards. And these will have a card trick one to the front, very similar to your average Japanese packs. It's literally very similar, um, especially in terms of quality too. Simplified Chinese Pokemon cards are printed in Japan, if you haven't heard me say that earlier. But in terms of quality, the slim and jumbo packs do have a little bit different card quality. I made a whole video on it. I gave a lot of examples, especially with the um, sparkly cards like Seeker Rare or Hyper Rare cards. Oh, this one's giving me a hard time. Let's definitely use this to open it up because sometimes it's a little bit difficult. And if you have painted nails like me, don't expect them to survive when you're opening packs like these. So you have to go through a bit of a surgical process to get this open. I do like the pack though, the pack art on the back, especially with the white tips. It looks really nice actually. It's a nice little contrast. I thought I would like the black tips better from the jumbo packs, but I'm definitely liking the slim packs a bit. And yes, they feel a bit more premium in my opinion. I do like the card quality of slim packs more. I love this. The saturation can definitely vary from what I see between slim and jumbo. And as well as the texturing, um, because sparkling is a bit less on these slim packs, you're gonna definitely notice te texturing a bit more. I say I guess it's more so the sparkle than really the texture. It's probably the same, but because there's less sparkle, it pops out more. All right, guys, at least this one's a bit tougher on my end. This time set A, I was actually a lot easier for some reason, but it's okay. I think it's just luck with how the blister unfolds. One to the front. All right, we have Lady again. And if you want to learn also too, this is random, but the simplified Mandarin Chinese name of Giratina, Tiradina. Uh, so again, like a transliteration of Giratina, just saying it in the Chinese accent. It's kind of like Lugia as I mentioned in set A. Also we have Spectre without Calyrex, just the horse, <laughs> just the ghost horse. But yes, guys, I like to uh, teach a little bit of the Chinese names where I can um, because it's fun. And this one is still giving me a hard time. Look at that, guys. These aren't being nice to me. Good thing I have my box cutter, Larry, here because otherwise I'd be really struggling. All right, let's get this out. Something better come up in this box to make this worthwhile, but I really just open both booster boxes so you guys have a better idea of how the pull rates are. You know, obviously different packaging, different card amount, etc. Oh yeah, Reggie Gigas is in this set too, including the special artwork that we've seen from Crown Zenith and V-Star Universe. Yeah, I also noticed the coloring is a bit different from the previous Reggie Gigas that I've pulled in Japanese. I'm definitely more on like the blue tones, I guess, is more prominent than the Jumbo Pack version. So that's, if I had an, another one side by side, I could definitely show you guys a comparison. I definitely love doing that. So you can see sort of the small differences. When it comes to the V cards, it's gonna be mainly the coloring rather than the texturing and sparkle. If I ever have the lucky chance of pulling a hyper rare in both, I'll more, be more than happy to show you guys. But that's also why I made my previous video. Ah, another Shinji Kanda art, Shinji Kanda Bihiyan. If you remember the Magikarp, obviously from Paldea Evolve, same artist got you know pumped in the english market for whatever reason um but yeah lovely card nonetheless i love the little gyarados in the background 
kind of hinting at Chinese mythology there with the carp going up the river to become a dragon. All right, continuing. Because also uh, carps have scales, like how dragons do. So anyway, continuing. Let's continue to hunt for anything nice. Another Shinji Kondo. Wow, is this a good hit, guys? I've been getting so many Shinji Kondo arts. I just hope I pull the third one in the set. The likelihood is very slim, though. No pun intended because of the big size of these sets. You know, when it comes to the subsets, the ones where the, the sets that are labeled with a 0.5, those tend to be much smaller sets. It'll have, a, it'll have the leftover cards from these sets pretty much. So as you can see here, um, Dark Shadow over the Blue Sea is CS6B. That's why I call this set B. It's all in the set number. And then C towards the end indicates that this is simplified Chinese. So that's one way to distinguish these cards from the traditional Chinese version. Remember too, simplified Chinese cards just came about in 2022, whereas traditional Chinese cards have been about since base set. Yes, Wizards of the Coast base set. I made a whole video on that. If you want to learn more about the history between simplified and traditional Chinese Pokemon cards, please check out that video too. It's very helpful, especially if you're just starting to collect Chinese Pokemon cards and you're still getting confused between the releases because both traditional and simplified Chinese Pokemon sets have their own re unique releases early on. Of course, with mainland China, we're still in the middle of the unique releases because they're still catching up with Japan. But Taiwan and Hong Kong with the traditional Chinese Pokemon cards have already caught up. And we have here, oh, another Radiant Eternatus. Oh, this is such a delight. So the reason why I say that, let me go ahead and pull it up. And I have it right here conveniently next to me. So as you can see, this is from the Slim Pack, right? So I have my Jumbo Pack one here. Comparison time, guys. What were the chances of us pulling this? There's also Radiant Alakazam, if you didn't know, two pullable from Set B. But here we go, side by side. Yes, slight coloring difference. I say with the Radiant cards, it's a little bit hard to see sort of the texturing difference is because there's not really much sparkle, but there's definitely some sort of color difference. If you can't see it, I'm so sorry, but at least we pulled one from both pack types. Hit the like button, guys, for Eternatus. Very happy to pull it, so very nice Radiant. Usually I've seen at least a one Radiant from the boxes. Sometimes I've pulled two, or you know, there's also a chance you may not pull any at all, but when you do pull one, it's definitely a good one. Because essentially Radiant Pokemon are shiny Pokemon, if you didn't know, if you're new to collecting. It's just a different name for them. You know, they used to be called Shining, Shiny. They just added a new gimmick of Shiny Pokemon cards. But they made the whole card look like a diamond, which is very pretty, or some sort of gemstone. Um, but yes, continuing to see lots of Lost Zone cards. I like how these are reverse hollow. The trainers too, trainer cards have like a nice Pokeball um, foil there. So that's pretty nice. All right, let's keep going. So far having a lot of fun. Yeah, set A, you know, treated me okay. I'm not gonna say it was the best but at least I got my secret rares because again, they're not guaranteed, especially with the slim pack boxes. I'd say you're definitely gonna see more, um, no SR boxes amongst the slim pack boxes from my experience versus the jumbo pack booster boxes. All right, we have Mawile and Re Reuniclus from Gen 5. All right, we're almost halfway done. Again, I like the gray. Let me know what you guys think to the slim pack blister color. I didn't expect these to be gray. I thought they were going to be light blue, just like the um, set A ones with Lugia on it. But again, I know a lot of you from the previous video definitely prefer the jumbo packs more. It is easier to open. It's easier to get through. But if you're a sealed collector, I know you guys are probably going to gravitate towards the blisters because they're nicer for display and also just for storage purposes. They're smaller, more compact, whereas the jumbo packs are very thick. But at the same time too, at least you know you're going to pull something at least shiny or holographic from the jumbo packs. All right, this is going to give me a hard time. I'm going to do a surgical opening. I'm going to do a C-section there on the cover. <laughs> All right, keep going here. I really want to pull something nice with these. we got an Aerodactyl, but I want to get something else nice too. I really want to see some sort of Giratina special art. I'm not definitely asking for too much. All right, Frostlass with Candies in the back. We have here Noibat. Oh my gosh, guys, this is so interesting. In set A, I've also pulled the same Radiant two times in a row. I don't know if this is like a printing situation or an error, but hey, I will not complain pulling a third Radiant Eternatus. You guys better smash the like button. Pulling my favorites, you know, unexpectedly so. But yes, you have some dragon type Pokemon in this set, especially because also Giratina is considered a dragon type. It's not listed on the pack. I don't, I don't know why. Even the colorless typing is never really listed on the packs whenever it does this whole thing. I'll show you again. So we have water, psychic, fighting, and dark, even though it's, I think it, I would call these the focus types. The other types, because there's less cards overall, 
you know, less dragon types versus like water type Pokemon. They probably just don't include it on there. We have Noivern. Um, so yeah, interesting little observation there. And we have Reverse Hollow Executor once again. But yeah, it's not easy to pull the same card from both types of packs from the same set in the same video. So whenever that does happen, it's a nice occurrence. But let's hopefully pull something else good. You know, if you haven't seen a possum bud already, open simplified Chinese Pokemon cards. He's definitely had really good luck with these slim pack booster boxes from what I've seen so far. Buffalant, luck always changes though with every opening. Just because your luck is good one time doesn't mean it's going to be bad later on or the same or better, etc. Gambler's fallacy, don't fall for it. Uh, let's keep going, guys. So these definitely are giving me a bit more of a struggle versus set A, but it's okay. When it comes to Chinese Pokemon cards, there's always lots to talk about. Um, but yeah, and again, just to address the question, because still people were asking after the last video about the Gengar special art, I do not know when it's coming out. I really want to know as well. But Pokemon have not hinted anything yet at some sort of maybe collection box or special set, or I don't know, is it going to come out in a deck or tournament promo? I'd like to know as well. But, you know, the fact that they included the regular Gengar V and VMAX in Nine Colors Gathering, but no special art, kind of says a lot. Because the Inteleon VMAX special art was included in that, in, um, I believe, oh no, it was Final Flame Dance. So it's the subset after Nine Colors Gathering. It's the one with the vocal Rono. I have opened that on my channel. The fact that they did slip that special art in there is very interesting because that was also in the same high class deck as the Gengar release in Japan, at least, and also Korea too. But the Inteleon and Gengar were released as, um, at least the VMAX special arts were released as tournament promos in the other Asian languages, like traditional Chinese and Indonesian. So that's very interesting. They've, d they've gone their own route. They did not release any high class decks in that matter. Okay. All right, rest assured guys, I'm very happy. At least we got an SR, we got Colress. I do like the colors on this. They, do, they definitely pop with that slim pack, you know, color gradient. It's very different from the jumbo pack cards. The jumbo pack card quality will pretty much be the same as what you see on Japanese Pokemon cards. But this is why I like collecting the slim type cards because um, the quality is a bit different. It still has that nice texturing and feel, but I definitely say the color scheme is definitely different. It pops more in my opinion. Um, and especially when it, you get something sparkly, you'll definitely see more of the artwork because it's less prominent versus the jumbo packs. All right, guys, Whew, we got something. Can we pull something else? Maybe. The chances of that happening are very slim, but we'll see. I'm not going to get my hopes up, but maybe at least maybe a V-Star. I haven't seen many art rares this time around. I've definitely pulled one. Oops, that didn't come out fully. Let's definitely get all of those out. Um, previous box definitely gave me one, but they seem to be lacking this time around. Definitely a lot of radiance, at least. That's been consistent. Can we get, oh, that went a little bit out of order. I apologize, but it's just a clay doll, reverse hollow. All right, let's keep going. We still have a good amount of packs left. Still a good chance to at least pull something nice. Oh, come on. These packs are definitely giving me my hard time this, this time around, but it's okay. Ah. As long as we can get into the pack and rip it open, right? All right, let's see what else we can get. But yeah, I wonder what the subset's gonna be for this release, Dark Shadow Over the Blue Sea. Um, pretty much, I believe, after this, I wonder if they're just gonna go after the subset, of course. I wonder if we're gonna go straight into Scarlet and Violet because we're pretty much at the end of the Sword and Shield era. And then from there, it, w it may not take long for Pokemon China to catch up with Japan. You know, we're still middle of the Scarlet and Violet era. We just got into stellar type Pokemon with Terrapagos. Pretty much Pokemon from the DLC. And, you know, it didn't take long for Japan to even get to that point. And their sets are so much smaller versus these Chinese, you know, mega sets, as I like to say, or mashup sets. All right, reverse hollow right there. I only try not to do two to the front because sometimes they put the hit at the back or like the, you know, second to last slot. And I don't want to put two to the front because that's definitely happened before in the past. All right. These are definitely not opening up as easily, but it's okay. Thank you guys for sitting through my struggle <laughs> for the sake of education and learning about this set. Set B is definitely fun. Um, it's definitely very themed, one to the front. It, it, I've, because I've seen Colrus before too from Night Wanderer, it's a little bit triggering from that set in a good way though. Oh, very nice. I'm very happy to pull a Articuna Reverse Hollow. See, when it comes to the Reverse Hollows, if you're looking for specific cards, these are very unpredictable to pull. Um, if you really, if you collect species, I feel like whenever you pull Reverse Hollows of your favorites, it's always a special feeling because you can't really ask for that. Arguably, sometimes it could be harder to pull than certain secret rares. 
because you know that's it's a massive set and you never know what they're gonna pull but yeah third to last pack guys on to the front we're getting towards the end let's see what else we can get but yeah no language exclusive in this set i wish there was but i think we pretty much exhausted all the niantic cards at least as far as far as we know um i know all right second to last pack guys please Giratina, can you come out in some way? Even if it's a V or a V star, at least I can do a comparison because the colors will be very different. Um, texturing, you won't notice as much. Another Shinji Kanda Hypno, Pancham, Meditite, Love Disc, and Medicham. Med yeah, Medicham. Did I say Meditite? Medicham for the other one. It's okay. They're in the same pack. Meditite, Medicham. That's how it goes. Last pack, guys. Last chance of pulling a possible second secret rare. But it's very, very, very unlikely. All right, but overall, fun opening. At least we did get two secret rares. I cannot complain past that. One to the front, because getting none is a terrible feeling, and it has happened on camera. All right, I have Kamala and Brandon, one of the frontier brains. I loved Emerald so much. Battle Pyramid. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot from this opening. If you enjoyed it, be sure to make sure to subscribe and also hit the like button if you want to support my channel. Check out my merch on crystalcollects.com and also other multi-language Pokemon card products. Stay safe, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.